everyone. I'm Chris Van Wingerden, Senior Vice President of Learning Solutions here at Domino. Welcome to today's special webinar session, Bulletproof Your Financial Finance Regulatory Practices with the Domino One Solution. A couple of housekeeping items before we get started. Today's session is definitely being recorded. We'll be following up with links to the recording after the session, so be sure to watch your email. And as we go through today's session, feel free to share your questions and thoughts in the questions feature. We'll do our best to answer these as we go, and we'll also make time at the end of our session to review questions. Um, joining us today are three special guests. We have Leslie Ropolato from Discover, and Rick Atley and Wayne Conley from Truist. In a bit, they'll be sharing how they've been using Domino One and Convey to meet, meet and ensure compliance and regulatory needs at their respective financial organizations. Leslie, Rick, Wayne, we're so honored to have you with us here today. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Um, we'll have you guys uh, slip off screen for a little bit and uh, I'll do some preparatory stuff and then we'll bring each of you back for a conversation as we, uh, as we go along here, gang. Excellent. Folks, I'm going to start out with um, just a little bit of an overview of, of Domino itself and Domino, the Domino solution. Just getting set up here. All right. So uh, Domino was first founded in 1997 and over our Am I sharing my screen? Perfect. <laughs> Always paranoid that these things work or don't work. Over our 25 years, we've got a demonstrated history of innovation and helping our clients uh, improve organizational performance. From our start in off-the-shelf e-learning to creating one of the first learning content management systems to evolving that into the award-winning Domino One e-learning authoring system, to our next step innovation, powering organizational knowledge creation to improve performance. Performance improvement isn't an event, it's a continuous process. Some solutions let you create content for your LMS to help employees begin to learn new tasks. Some solutions let you create content that employees can access as they work. And these independent systems aren't connected. So you lose time and money making separate content, updating separate content, and distributing separate content. Domino helps you create and distribute content for both of these mission critical needs keeping it synchronized and easily distributed wherever it's needed. The full Domino One knowledge management solution has our award-winning Domino One as the organization's centralized content creation and knowledge management hub. Domino One's synchronized single sourcing content model simplifies initial design and content updates to make sure information is consistent no matter where an employee, customer, or stakeholder accesses it. And our Convey Dynamic Publishing Service delivers that content throughout your learning ecosystem. Convey makes it easier to publish and update content to your existing LMS, plus takes the hassle load of creating informal learning sites and, and portals like searchable knowledge bases, job aids, and other content needed in the flow of work. And that's the core of what we're going to talk about here today. I will also mention that here at Domino, we've also created the industry's full, first full service client success program called One Success. The One Success program helps ensure that your organization gets started successfully in the Domino One solution and ensures that you remain successful as your team changes over time. One Success is anchored by the One Charter document, which outlines your organization's goals, needs, and critical milestones so we can all ensure your success together. From formal training programs to 911 emergency help calls when you need it, One Success is designed to help your team succeed. And that's a bit of an introduction uh, of Domino One here, folks. And also forms the basis of, um, of the basis of what we're all going to discuss here today. So give me a second to shift a couple more things around. Um, so let's start off uh, by bringing Leslie Ropolato from from the Discover team back here with to uh, to the to the screen with us here. Hi, Chris. Hello, Leslie. So glad that the audio is working and all of those great things. We're always nervous as we come and go, right? <laughs> yeah. 
So uh, Leslie, describe for us the focus of your the, your team that you work with at Discover. Describe for us your focus um, in terms of content creation um, and some of the challenges of that, and and I guess the importance and and how it affects your the business as a whole. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Um, here at Discover, you know, we understand that starting a new role can be exciting and also overwhelming for our learners. And that's why we've developed comprehensive training programs to assist in getting acclimated to our organization's compliance standards, our policies, and our procedures. Through our well-structured onboarding programs designed in Domino One, we aim to provide employees with the necessary tools, resources, and knowledge to perform their duties confidently and still adhering to the policies and procedures that we have. Um, our training also doesn't stop at just onboarding new to role employees. Um, as the industry continues to evolve, so do the rules and regulations. For our existing employees, we recognize the importance of continuous upskilling to keep them well informed and equipped with the, the latest insights and best practices. We can always um, roll out short-term, quick on-the-go trainings to keep them updated on that, those best practices. So staying up to date, we can con um, collectively with our employees navigate the complexities of the regulatory landscape that exists in the banking industry today, and also making sure that we're still adhering to our business goals. Very cool. Um, and from what we've heard, talking both with yourself, the Truist team, some other financial team clients, that uh, the, the rule changes happen quite frequently, and it's a lot for you folks to, to keep up with. Um, so before you move to using Domino One, um, tell us a bit about what the content process for you, looked like for your team. Absolutely. Um, before moving to Domino One, our training revolved around standard e-learning courses. Uh, we also used PowerPoint. Um, participants guides and leaders guides maintaining kind of a trifecta of content for each one of our independent courses for both our self-paced and our in-person sessions. Uh, we also used job aids and things like that as supplemental material that we would distribute within the classroom. With the transition to Domino One, we've witnessed a remarkable transformation uh, we were able to migrate legacy content smoothly um, into Domino One, which was magnificent um, in of itself. Just that was a large project and undertaking for us. And there was lots of moving parts, collaboration with Domino to get that um, migration in place. Uh, that allowed us to have consistent learning across the organization. So gone are the days where our designers were, um, you know, maintaining multiple versions, this trifecta of classroom content. Uh, and our facilitators are out also now able to use the same courses, making sure that they have clarity and unity across the course, uh, across their classes within our organization. Uh, yeah. Domino also empowered us to create an agile design process, allowing multiple designers to collaborate and ed edit projects efficiently. Um, previously, before maybe a designer would have that one project that they owned and um, it, the accessibility for another designer to step in and possibly edit that content was not as available. And that flexibility really just um, with Domino One was really able to boost our flexibility and enhance the quality of our trainings. Uh, also streamlining our review and uh, feedback and review process um, with the Domino feature. Uh, so yeah, all in all, it's been huge changes um, going from what we previously had before. And this also set us up for a virtual learning environment moving into Domino One, which is something that didn't exist for us prior to Domino One, kind of really setting us up to be able to move to that virtual seamless onboarding experience. Very cool, very cool. And, and part of the thread of what you're discussing, a lot of this is um, a, a result of the fact that Domino One is a hosted system. 
Um, it's it's web-based, it's server-based, which means that folks can, as you said, access content uh, from uh, different places. No need to move physical or digital physical files, you know, source files around uh, from people to people to make edits and changes, et cetera. So a lot of collaboration and also the built-in review functionality that, uh, that sounds like your team's been able to really take advantage of. Yeah. So thinking about the diagram that I was just showing and how we, we kind of view things as breaking down into formal and informal uh, learning needs. Tell us about uh, how your team uses Domino One um, and the Convey Dynamic Publishing Service, um, how that's changed how your team can create and deliver formal learning. You bet. Uh, our shared lessons and um, single source content approach with Domino One has been a game changer for us. It saves uh, us that precious uh, design time, not only in the initial creation, but also performing quick updates. Uh, no more, you know, redundant work and having to update content in more than one place. Uh, one edit could reflect across all relevant courses. And if you'll pull up the first slide, I have an example of this. I'll let the team get that slide showing up. There we go. You got perfect. In this example here, we are using the learning object reuse function available in Domino One. On the image on the left, you can see kind of the shared functionality on the right hand side, that little branching icon in the structure of our content. This um, is, just, is a good indicator for our designers to say, hey, this piece of content is shared or reused in other courses. The image on the right hand side shows specifically which courses or the titles of the courses that this learning object or this piece of content is shared into. Uh, this project specifically, uh, the same content information is shared across 16 courses, which is huge for us. So we update, make the updates in one parent, one parent course on the left hand side, and it automatically makes the updates to the nine other courses that it's shared into or whatever that number is. Currently today in our library, we have courses that are shared over a hundred times or pieces of content shared over a hundred times in various um, courses. So really, really making it more efficient for our designers and getting those quick updates, you know, regulatory changes, system enhancements to our employees in a much more effective way. Right. So, I mean, two halves of the equation of what you're describing there, there's the fact that um, you're reducing initial build time by planning out and, and de determining that things can be shared and therefore not making a lot of redundant extra content, but then also the efficiency that you gain in, in updating that once and then pushing that out uh, to all the places where it's, uh, where it's been used, yeah. Yeah, Chris. you're exactly right, Chris. Uh, you can close out of this slide. Uh, mm -hmm. Convey publishing that exists in Domino One is also a huge feature and asset that we onboarded last year. Uh, Convey has um, allowed us to make those instant updates. And even though we update the content in maybe nine courses of that shared content, now to publish has become also the second piece to that um, puzzle. How do we get it to the learners as quickly as we made, the, made those changes? So we are able to do a quality review more quickly on the content, reducing that um, design cycle time. And thanks to the Convey and that seamless content deployment, we no longer have to involve the other teams such as an LMS administrator or something like that to get that content published. There's a feature within Domino One where we can hit a button that says publish. And we do have to go into each of those courses and hit publish, but we no longer have to download packages and up, like, update that and then potentially send work orders to another area to get that to the learner. Once we hit publish, the learner sees that changes, it changed almost instantly. So that's huge um, for us using that convey piece. Um, and I think one other piece here is branching. Uh, so if you'll pull up slide two, branching has allowed us to take similar or like content and create it in one seamless course or a container, making it one project that we have to update and maintain. In this image here, you can see the orange 
uh, buttons in the middle of the image, those are ro different roles within our organization that employees can click once they are in the course and say, I am in this this department of the company, or I'm in another department of the company. And as soon as they um, select their role, the content dynamically um, is enhanced based on the line of business or the role that they selected. So we can take like content with only similar or minor changes and package it in one single course, which also is a dream from a design perspective and maintenance and updates. Uh, not only that, but we can make sure consistent messaging on like content is delivered um, consistently across all employees. Take, for example, the idea of verifying a customer's identity, verifying their name, address, phone number. Every area within our organization has to has to complete that task, you know, just like any other uh, bank that exists there. And so being able to uh, have all of that type of action in one course and just call out the differences that apply to those different departments really just makes it um, really nice both for the learner and for our design team. Very, very cool. Yeah, close out of this. Awesome. Yeah. So back to the um, back to the diagram then formal informal learning. Um, tell us a little bit about um, about how you guys are using Domino One and the Convey solution for that. You bet. So we have one one of the first things we've done is we've developed dynamic micro learning systems centered around job skills. This is something that we did a huge initiative for this year. We were able to create templates and have a shell template created for some job skill micro deliverables. And we were able to curate skill-based content and package it together in our template and scale that. Um, currently today, within the first six months of the year, we were able to scale over 200 job skill micro learning deliverables into our platform. This has um, a specific need, right? It's tailored to a specific goal that the employee is looking for. But what this has allowed us to do is cater to those groups um, kind of seeking that comprehensive skill set or potentially needing pre-learning for maybe a certain type of certification or even upskilling for future job roles that exist within our company. Uh, so that really targeted skill de development of that micro learning um, has been really great. The other piece we've been able to do is uh, create simulations using the uh, capture feature. The capture feature is allowed us to create short term um, linear simulations that can be embedded into our existing content or it can stand alone and be published um, as a refresher or a quick learn on a certain system or enhancement that we want to share. Uh, we've also used lots of different interactions with Domino One to create um, stories, being able to storytell and um, provide real life examples to the learners so that it resonates and they can connect to the content and feel engaged to that content. Um, we do that a lot with our job aids and things like that, that, those infographics or storytelling features. Very cool. Very, very cool. Um, Leslie, thank you so much for sharing that with us today. It's been, uh, it's been a pleasure having you with us so far. Um, we'll bring you back to the end of our time together. Um, and just a general reminder, if anybody's got any questions, please uh, toss them into the chat, or the, sorry, the question panel as we go. Um, here, we'll have a chance to perhaps weave them in as we go, but also review them at the end of our time together. So, Leslie, let's have you uh, take a bit of a break here and we'll bring Rick and Wayne back from the, uh, from the Truist team. All right. Gentlemen, welcome back. Um, I'm going to bet that you were hearing a few things that echoed uh, some of your own uh, work and, and needs and, and, and complications, I guess, uh, uh, in, in what Leslie was, was describing there for us. Um, let's, uh, let's start with you guys, though, describing you know, what your team's responsible for content focus and, and how your team approached content creation before you ended up using uh, Domino One. Sure. Quick sound check. Can you hear me? Yep. We got you totally. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. 
that. So, <laughs> so our team is responsible for the design, the build and manage of enterprise content, which includes a lot of our compulsory training. We do manage some off the shelf content for industry standard compliance training, but really anything Truist specific, we build ourselves. Uh, for those who have not heard, Truist is, a, is, the, uh, is the result of a, a pretty significant merger that happened a few years ago between a couple of uh, other banks. And uh, through that process, um, as far as what it looked like for us before bringing on Domino, we had one organization that was using a much older learning content management system or LCMS to build e-learning. And the other one was using a more standard uh, standalone authoring tool. Awesome. Um, and, and so you had two sort of things going on at the same time as you as the two halves of the equation came together yeah. into what is now truest um so you know what were some of the reasons and pains that pushed your team to look for a new way to do things sure well, we were looking for a standard solution that we could use for all future development and we did look at, consider using the standalone authoring tool on its own and then we also looked at the lcms that we had at that point uh, originally to be honest, we were going to stick with the LCMS that we had, even though it wasn't great. Um, it was older and, and there were some things it couldn't do. Um, but then, unfortunately, we learned that the vendor was going to shut down. So we had to open our options to new solutions. Uh, that was the process that brought us to into contact with Domino. Um, and uh, as we looked at the options there, we were looking for something that mirrored the benefits of a standalone authoring tool and the flexibility we you can get with that with the um, benefits and the management benefits of having an LCMS. Uh, the standalone authoring tool, just to be frank, was, was a cheaper solution for us, but we ran into trouble with the management of source files and publishing to the LMS. Uh, anybody that's ever worked with standalone authoring tools, source files can get lost, they can get corrupted easily. Uh, not only that, but then as, as Leslie mentioned, we had the similar type of challenge where um, we have a very thorough and extensive requirements to upload new files to the LMS. We've got a team that does that. So a simple update where we could just be updating one or two words uh, that just meet even even just a misspelling or something could take two weeks to get uh, published and, and put into the system again. Uh, not to mention the size of the files were a bear um, as well. A couple yeah. other things that we were looking to try to do um, through uh, bringing on Domino. Uh, we wanted to e extend the authoring capabilities beyond our central team. We recognized that our central team couldn't really build everything that was going to be needed. Uh, so one of our strategic goals has been to enable line of business practitioners, uh, le le learning and development practitioners to create content for their groups directly. Uh, but we wanted to use Domino because it would allow us to maintain some control and oversight of a number of different areas. Um, we also wanted to be able to, like Leslie mentioned, we, we wanted to be able to build content that be, could be used for both formal and informal just-in-time um, learning situations, learning experiences, uh, where learners can access the content for informal stuff that's from a URL, but it's easily updated. So we can post it anywhere, um, but we can update it very easily without having to upload something new. Yeah, and that's where the convey publishing comes in, is being able to generate those URLs instantly for for you to share, as well as one more click and, and it's updated instantly for you next time you need to make a change too. Very cool. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about content delivery in a minute, but uh, first let's talk about some of the administrative pains that Domino One has helped you solve. Sure. One big piece was maintaining standards and uh, requirements for anybody who's authoring it. You know, they, one of the challenges with a standalone tool or or anything else that we don't have visibility into is that we couldn't really control if somebody broke um, our standards for accessibility or branding or anything like that. So one benefit as uh, with Domino is that regardless of who authors it, we can enforce the standards. We can create uh, we can create the the templates and the the themes that we need, um, and then we can enforce the standards and quality requirements because we can, and any of our authors or administrators can access it in the in the um, learning content management system whenever we want to. So it doesn't matter who built it. Uh, another big piece is we have to retain um, content for legal or regulatory uh, discovery purposes, and uh, one of the ways we do that is we we retain that by um, document uh, having a document version of the content that we build uh, we have to hold on to it for a set period of time so one way that domino helps with that is we can publish a document version of anything we build to archive so that we can respond to legal and, and regulatory requests yeah and, and just for folks um, who might not 
you know, be able to follow the trail here. Uh, publishing that document version is simply just one more uh, publishing option from the content that you've made, say for e-learning or for other purposes. It's just one more publish option, another couple of yep. clicks, a button, a button or two, and then and you've got that document then to be able to to save it for that for those legal requirements. That's right. Yeah. Very cool. So tell us how you use Domino One and the Convey Delivery Service to support what you need to deliver um, as formal learning. Thinking again about that diagram with the formal and informal portions of the equation. Sure. Um, in terms of content creation, um, we've set up a primary theme that's pre-configured uh, to brand colors, company logo, and this saves time because it ensures brand compliance and and so it's nice to just have that there, you know, once you create it once and you can reuse it multiple times. Um, we do all the authoring in Flow, um, and this prepares us for mobile delivery. Um, and as well, it allows us to create accessible content um, without a lot of extra effort. So um, we don't need to move layers around the stacking order, the order it was added to the course, you know, none of that matters because in Flow, it's pretty much, uh, accessible out of the box like that because of how how the the um you know there's no layering to consider for that um and basically just set the alt text or you know set an image as as decorative and move on um so we're very pleased with that um in terms of accessibility um we also maintain baseline courses for common page layouts custom interactions with variables and things like that so you build it once you, um, you know, insert from a baseline into a current project and update it for the current situation and um, you're ready to go. Um, in terms of uh, gamification, uh, also, you know, we have baseline interactions that are gamified experiences too. Um, and uh, we have a code of ethics uh, example where we do present scenarios and have have the learner uh, score points and things like that. And as well with um, HTML, HTML5 and JavaScript, um, we can use a variety of tools um, and then upload to Domino um, as an HTML widget. And so, and the, the beauty of that is it's not only just a standalone. So um, with being able to access the Domino API, you can send variables and set variables um, from within that widget and then reference that later in the course, how they, uh, you know, performed on a particular um, interaction also in terms of workflow um, huge advantages uh, we love the built-in review functionality so any teammate um, we can add as a domino reviewer and then they can go in and review add comments to the course um, and those comments persist throughout the life of the course so that's good from an historic perspective um, if a uh, SME questions you know uh, you know I said to do this and you know looking at it and basically go back and say, okay, well, we address this comment in this way. So um, another uh, advantage with workflows we found with Domino is that uh, using different publishing profiles or publish profiles for different requirements, um, such as we have a default profile we use 90% of the time or more for you know all courses where we have either an acknowledgement or assessment at the end, um, but then we also have um, additional uh, published profiles we use for pretest required or pretest optional and so it's nice to be able to just swap out whatever published profile at the end and you know it functions differently based on on uh, requirements for that um, also performing course maintenance without needing to replace the SCORM file uh, thanks to convey again uh, versus the the process of uploading and re-uploading SCORM packages to the LMS, um, and and something else that I didn't hear mention is the tiny size of the uh, the SCORM stub file that we use. You know, even if you do have to update it, say you change the published profile or something down the road, you'd have to re-upload that. It's tiny. You can send it via email, um, whereas before we had to use these file storage you know locations for people to put things, and, and because it's huge, and you know, just the time for that was was a lot. Um, so that's 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 pretty much how we use uh, use it here at Truist. Um, you know, we do some of the same things that Leslie mentioned, but those are the highlights that I wanted to, to touch on here. So, yeah, for sure. And just for a little bit of um, clarity for folks on um, with the Convey Dynamic uh, Publishing Service, when you've created a SCORM package, you can publish it to the Convey Service, which gives you a, a, a we call it 
a SCORM stub, but you can think of it as a small link package, then that's what gets installed in your LMS instead of moving the you know huge or huge potentially anyway huge data package of a full SCORM package over. Um, and then once that's set up in your LMS, same as uploading a SCORM package you would do normally, but from there on forward, all content updates happen to the convey and the, the link in the LMS never changes and so the, the, the updates are, are there instantly for you and no need to move any packages around um, after that after that initial upload. So, yeah, very cool. Um, so I also understand you folks use Domino One and Convey to support a number of, of informal learning needs as well. Yes, um, we use different player experiences to achieve different goals. For example, the knowledge base experience um, we found is, is fantastic for, um, you know, for the, um, the capture simulation, software simulations that we have. We package them there. They can search. Um, we separate by system functions. So we have a different knowledge base for each system. And then all of the separate simulations within that are, are by, uh, you know, a function that would be um, performed within that software so they can search for that and and that's that's huge in terms of like just in time we also include some of those informal but um, um, not using that same player experience just embedded in the course directly but that's a good way to deliver you know per system having different knowledge bases um, also micro learning um, experiences um, uh, we have a current project where, uh, where we're looking at a modular approach and um, looking at perhaps that micro learning um, player experience for that. Um, and Rick mentioned the, the um, line of business practitioners. Um, and so our team is not able to build everything for everyone. Um, so we can provide those baseline templates um, and other ID resources to those folks so they'll be successful as well. Um, and they'll be using it to, to build job aids and VILT um, uh, presentations, even simulations, um, leverage and leverage parts of Domino's authoring training guides along with uh, several internal and external resources. And we created a three-tiered like beginner, intermediate, advanced uh, training plan for those folks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the tool is flexible enough that you, you can you can do some amazing, you know, advanced things you've mentioned, gamification um, and some other things as well. But it can also be something that, that folks can use and uh, without having to need it, a background in either multimedia development or, or other um, you know structural design related tools too so being able to leverage those folks really is kind of an extension it extends your team out and uh, and takes advantage of um, of their of their actual you know their their own built-in knowledge too but uh, things that they have expertise in so yeah and i i also understand that's not uh, you know the end of, of what you guys envision as your journey and with domino one overall um so let's talk a little bit about uh, about that. Yeah. So our ultimate goal is as a learning content management system is to leverage Domino for all of our learning content. Uh, right now, we've been primarily using it for e-learning, uh, but we've been piloting and, and testing some options for uh, building instructor-led like classroom content and uh, and and transitioning our our VILT uh, presentations to replace our PowerPoint and Word and, and all of those things. We we want to get uh, some of those pieces uh, transitioned in so that we've just got it all and we can manage it all in one place. Uh, so that's that's in pilot right now. Um, another piece is the we are we don't currently have a learning record store uh, so but we are looking forward to having one eventually and one of the benefits that we're looking to gain from that is leveraging the X API which is built into Domino. So it's all the content that we built it's already got the the hooks in there so we just have to once we have an LRS we can connect it very easily and it will start sending those statements and we can get some really really good analytics at that point. So um, that's something we're excited about we just haven't gotten to use it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. I mean, everybody still will rely on, uh, always does rely on their LMS for reporting for those critical things like completions or, or test results um, for, for formal learning, etc. But XAPI lets you get more insight into that process, what people are doing actually, you know, if you need insight into the activities that a learner is doing within a course in the LMS or even insight into activities that people are doing in those informal job aids, like what are people searching for in a knowledge base, gives you a good indication of what um, kind of pains people have or, or what kind of problems they're looking to solve and then have, hey, then we can respond to that. We can create more content, we can adjust content, et cetera, for that. So XAPI sure is a, is a powerful thing. And um, one of the things we're really quite, we've long been supporters of XAPI from, uh, from its earliest tin can days forward. And uh, the fact that basically almost everything you need is built in already, very minimal effort to start using XAPI. The Domino one, we're quite, uh, 
we're quite proud of that. So, yeah, awesome. Um, Rick and Wayne, <clears throat> pardon me, Rick and Wayne, thank you so much for for you know walking through us, uh, walking us through all of that that you guys are doing at Truist. Um, let, let's bring Leslie back on screen. I'm going to check and see if there are uh, any questions uh, while while we're getting Leslie back. Hello again, Leslie. Hello, hello. So happy that the uh, the internet gremlins didn't uh, <laughs> it didn't cause any issues for your either you know your your temporary departure and your return. Um, gang, I'm not actually seeing any uh, any questions posted to the to the question panel in the GoToWebinar tool there. Um, so again, uh, uh, to all three of you, thank you so much for joining us here today. Um, we really really do um, appreciate and value. What you uh, you know you've been able to share. We also very much appreciate and value um, the uh, the fact that you on a you know take a, such a pride I guess in being able to use Domino One. Let's um, wrap things up I guess with some final thoughts from 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 each of you. Um, Leslie, let's let you go first again. Sure. Um, at, uh, final thoughts here, and one thing that wasn't mentioned regarding Domino One is the customer care and service that they provide. Uh, it has been great. Uh, we are able to work with um, a team within Domino One that really provides us and sets us up for any type of one-on-one -on -one meetings, onboarding, upskilling of the usage of the tool. Not only that, is in the financial industry, you know, we all want to try to find a way of you know, working seamlessly and easier and also with our learning management tools and ecosystem. So being able to partner with some of Domino's other clients has really been, uh, it's it's been in, incredibly valuable and needed. Um, I can already see here how I want to collaborate with Richard and Wayne after this session to see how they're kind of doing some things within the tool. Um, and we can learn and grow together using that tool and functionality that ex um, exists. So being able to benchmark with your other clients has really been great in the customer care that you provide. Mm. And we really appreciate that. Um, and we're so proud both of what we're able to do, but also honored to, to hear, that, uh, hear that from you, Leslie. Um, Rick and Wayne, anything from you guys? Sure. Yeah, the only thing I will add, I had mentioned before we were looking for that combination of a, a standalone authoring tool, the strengths of a standalone authoring tool and an LCMS. And uh, I will I will confess we were skeptical at first when uh, when Domino claimed to be able to do both. But uh, as we dug in and started using it, we were really impressed. So if that's if that's something you're looking for, too, that's that's something that was uh, very be has been, been very beneficial to us. We love having the ability to create very interactive and uh, engaging learning experiences with the tool um, while still benefiting from having it all in one place as a learning content management system so definitely worthwhile we're very pleased very cool yeah i'll just add that we love the tool um, we love the support um, you know to echo leslie's thoughts we've had you know it really feels like close connection with support and with domino in general it's you don't get that from you know, most large companies um, your size. So um, that's that's special. I would say hold on to that if if nothing else. So, uh, but anyway, and also too great to meet other um, you know financial industry folks. And Leslie, we also Rick and I had been IMing yesterday uh, about you know wanting to connect based on you know some of the things you shared. So so this is great all the way around. Thank you so much, Chris, for for having us. Yeah, well, we are proud. One of our, our slogans is connect the thoughts. And that, I guess, also includes connecting our, our clients together so that they can share their thoughts, and et cetera. So while we've been doing this, um, there have actually been a couple of questions that have been shown, uh, been added to the question panel. So uh, let's let's take a look at those. So um, there is a question um, in the uh, that we've, that's been added. Um, can the speakers talk to the risk they've reduced because of the way they can push out content accurately and quickly to respond to industry demands? Going back to the the you know the one click updates through the convey publish service etc. And making sure that folks have the the right information that they have as as quick as possible. Um, and, and you know some thoughts and reflections on that. And I'll leave it open to whoever wants to to chime in on that. Could you repeat the first part of that question, Chris? I missed sure, the first. Yeah. 
Yeah, talk a bit about um, the reduction of risk um, because of the way that you can publish out content instantly and, and get updates to people. <laughs> yeah, so one of the challenges for us uh, with the timeline, you know, we, we are, there's two parts to our risk. There's, there's making sure that we are following um, from a technical risk of making sure things don't break. And so that's why our, our technical uh, process is, is extensive. But the problem with that is that, you know, we, when we had issues in content, especially something that was updating pretty quickly or something um, you know we needed to get through all the process of getting you know, subject matter expert and stakeholder approvals um, only to you know then have to wait again to get something published which all that period of time between completion and publishing is time where content is inaccurate <laughs> mm -hmm. and so that uh, that it was a significant we were constantly being pushed like how can we get this out faster you know if we don't get this out there soon you know we're at risk and you know we, we could get into all sorts of trouble so uh being able to basically just hit a button and publish it and it's done is is huge so that that mm -hmm. that time differential from seconds versus weeks <laughs> for publishing um significantly reduces risk for us and also I'll tack on to that, you know, the clicking one button to just publish a legal uh, retention copy and then have that in a separate archive um, yeah. where we can provide that as needed requested by regulators or, or the legal department to just hand that over. Here's the content in this course and it's, you know, versioned from different updates we've made. We create one of those. So that's huge. Click one button and that happens. So very yeah. cool. Yeah, and I would also, I agree with everything that Richard and Wayne have said, and I have a, a few other examples, is I stated earlier some of our previous uh, deliverables were having participants' guides and leaders' guides. Um, during that time, facilitators essentially could download that and save that to their desktop and say, this is my copy that I'm facilitating off of, um, which is very common in the L&D industry. So we, that doesn't exist anymore. The learners and our facilitators are using the same updated version. So being able to save an older version to their desktop to be facilitating off of potentially outdated content really doesn't exist there anymore too, which is great. I see you all nodding <laughs> in agreement. <laughs> um, the other piece there is, you know, it, we, in our organization we may move employees and staffing based on business needs um you know call volumes and different things like that being a digital bank being able to repackage content quickly um based on upskilling maybe employees moving from one area of the organization to the next it allows us to quickly package the content needs for that, that set of employees and also route it for approval with the ownership of who needs to kind of sign off on that um, content. Um, so I worked on a project um, similar to that last year and we were able to stand up an onboarding package using our templates and baseline projects like Wayne mentioned um, and set that up within three, I think it was three days and then route that for like an expedited approval and we were able to have that ready to go for learners when within like five to six business days versus before something like that would take months and months and months potentially to create so being able to also meet the business needs quickly reduces that risk um, for our learners and for the business wow very cool. Um, here's a great question. Um, how did you get your SMEs, your legal and stakeholder, other stakeholders to get over the hump and trust that things would be published everywhere automatically? Did you have any you know, folks with, with doubts about that or, or did you have to do any work to, uh, to, to make sure that, um, you know, that you know, it was believed and it was going to, be, it was going to work? Does you all start that one? Sure. <laughs> you saw me smiling. Um, when, you know, it's interesting because anytime we show our business partners the content and the look and feel um, using the template, they're always in awe because the content does show so beautifully in comparison to um, other deliverable options. Uh, so that's the first thing. They just see it and they're in awe. They're like, yes, do this. <laughs> Um, however, we have had um, 
challenges at times, you know, just outdated mindsets and beliefs, so to speak, of what training should look like. So it wasn't necessarily the content piece or using Domino. It was just that mindset shift of being able to, you know, we can have it online. We can um, um, have digital training and digital classroom environment. Um, this was all pre-COVID, of course. Um, so moving, having that all set up prior to that was a, uh, was really nice for us. Uh, we did pilot it out and roll it out in phases, which allowed um, one area to shine and focus in the pilot, and we were able to share those results um, with our other um, business partners as we scaled it throughout our entire organization. Very cool. Yeah, we were similar. I mean, we a big part was just uh, showing them how it worked and getting them, uh, helping them to see how effective that could be. We still have to document, obviously, when we version something and what that looks like, because that's obviously, you know, they, they want to make sure that that's discoverable if, you know, if we need to go back and find a previous version. So that's one of the reasons for the document piece. But once they understood how that worked and that, uh, yes, it actually does, it, it does effectively update, um, it, it took a little bit just to get comfortable with it but for the most part they, they they've now they've now accepted that it's mm -hmm. that's how it works <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah i guess it's probably yeah. a case of, of showing is believing too right um mm -hmm. hey make the change push the button show it in the lms and show the changed content truly um, yeah chris one other thing um that we mentioned i think we all mentioned it is the feedback and review process mm -hmm. so yeah. Previously, when we would, you know, maybe send a legal copy to a business partner to redline with edits, you know, we would get that single source back from just that one business partner. The feedback and review tool in Domino allows um, all business partners to see each um, the feedback from each other, um, collectively getting that feedback and viewable. Also, as the designers designing the course and making um, in uh, design efforts from new creation and or maintenance of content, uh, those same um, reviewers on the course can see those active changes happening real time, which doesn't leave a business partner wondering, are my edits being made? How's the content design going? And so that also um, relieves kind of anxiety um, from business partners of, is are the changes happening? <laughs> yeah. they, they don't feel like they're missing things either, but one of the problems we had when people reviewed document versions of it in order to give us feedback was that, you know, especially if you were trying to be very interactive and less linear of a course, it was hard to follow that all the way through and the document. And especially if there was feedback, you know, if you clicked on something and you got a specific set of feedback, um, where as if they're doing it in the tool itself and they're actually going through and selecting the, uh, selecting the, and they get the feedback, they can give us they can give us feedback on that feedback <laughs> right, immediately yeah. right there while they're doing it. So it's if they're experiencing it like the learner does, which makes that much easier for them to give us feedback that we can use. Yeah, in, in, within context, right? They're not, yeah. um, especially with, as you say, branching or, or, or things where page three, there's something, but the feedback's yes. actually on page seven because of the yes. you know, ways that content actually you know does connect. Um, and so that can be hard for someone to, for someone who isn't part of that design process and, and familiar with it to even for them to connect that these two things are, are related for sure. I think too about the times that um, prior to our own review feature, um, the number of times you'd get an email from somebody with a bunch of edits and you'd, somebody else had taken the care of going into a, an Excel file and listing them and somebody else is in a Word doc in there. You have to collate them all uh, you know, together as well and then figure out how you're gonna share them all back so that everybody can see all of the uh, all of the comments and know what else everybody else is saying. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, from a from an authoring, you know, and content, you know, design team, you know, perspective, is a question here. Was there any resistance when you were trying to to incorporate uh, the use of Domino One or move to the Domino One approach? For for authoring for us, I would say not. Too much. There was, I mean, there was a little bit of difference, but I mean, as as our authors particularly started to get into it and see how easy it was, and and truthfully, we started with Claro just because that's what we were more used to, a kind of a more pixel perfect type of view. Um, but as as many people do, we transitioned to uh, Flow, um, which you know it provides much more responsive and and um, beneficial interaction regardless of what type of device they're on. And so we we now do all of our development in Flow, um, but uh, 
so, so that wasn't it. I will say, you know, I'm interested in Leslie's perspective on this too. So transitioning ILT content, um, I think you know, one of the things we've been working through the change management because the the experience for a facilitator to leverage that is a little different <laughs> than what uh, than what they've been used to, where they would also download a copy and upload, yeah, you know, and maybe make some tweaks for themselves. <laughs> And then, and then present that. So it's it's a bit of a change management pr approach there from a delivery perspective. From an authoring thing, I mean, Wayne, did you the you had you have a lot of the developers on your team? Did you run into a lot of that? For us, oh, you're on mute. <laughs> Sorry about that. The mute button caught me again, um, and I made it this far. <laughs> I, was, I was just saying I can't think of an example of that off the top of my head, Rick. So. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Yeah, we were making changes to our L&D um, ecosystem, you know, prior to onboarding Domino as one of our authoring tools. Uh, so some of that change management and mindset was already in in motion. Um, we did have some resistance uh, mm -hmm. in both development from a designer perspective and also from facilitators similar to what you were saying, um, Richard. But I don't know if it was necessarily tied to the authoring tool of more or less um, that change management piece. Mm -hmm. Uh, because it is simple to make edits, getting used to designing in classic e-learning versus a responsive page like Flow does have a certain skill set. And, you know, what, how we were able to manage through that is we took e-learning designers uh, that were really SMEs at designing e-learning and responsive design. And we, they became the SMEs um, of Domino and the authoring tool. And they were able to take that and onboard and upskill maybe our ILT designers on that responsive design using Flow, which at that time we had two different um, design teams. Um, in addition to that, we had to work through, you know, training virtually um and digitally versus training with participants guides printed out for the learner uh that is new for our facilitators and for our learners so um our delivery teams um uh, really uh, um did uh, amazing uh, did a fantastic job of uh, bridging that gap and bringing the entire l d staff along the the journey of that transition uh, they still kind of print out their own personal notes as they're facilitating content. Sometimes we have a hidden page or learning object if we want certain things to be specific for the leader that's facilitating, which is a really nice feature that we can hide pieces of content for the learner, but still keep it all packaged together. Um, so yeah, we did have some resistance, but I think we overcame them collectively in a, as an organization and were able to prepare for some of those things. Very cool, very cool. Um, there's an ROI question here as well. Um, wondering, someone's wondering if um, you've been able to, to notice or tie back any um, increases in customer satisfaction because the, uh, the your ability to keep your you know your employees informed using the the tools that you have. ROI is always a challenge for for, for L and D organizations. <laughs> beyond you know, so many of us don't get to ever go beyond or don't go beyond say smile sheets and those sorts of things. But have you guys? Has, has anybody been able to to track to those higher you know business goal level ROIs and what you're doing with Domino One? Uh, Go ahead, Leslie. Oh, I was just gonna say we I have a couple of uh, pretty recent examples of that actually. So as we onboarded into Convey, which we added um, that to our Domino One uh, package last year, we had to. Um, build that framework of why we would convey work and save us time and money. Um, and, you know, when we're taking content, downloading it, and then sending work orders for another team to publish and get that uploaded, and we were doing that for every single version, I think Rick or Wayne talked to that about being able to, um, you know, it, it could take one to two weeks to update a simple edit of a new title of a procedure or something and being able to eliminate that um, other team or that third party within the company um, really cut out um, and made more available time for that team to focus on other work 
and also allowed us to get that content to the learners more quickly. So all in all, it was a savings from a time um, management perspective in all of our areas and really created an agile way of working within all of the different teams in, involved there. Also, you know, our micro learnings based off of job skills, um, kind of the off the shelf, really small micro deliverables. Um, being able to build that in a template first and scale that, I mean, to build over 200 skill-based learning paths in four to five months, I mean, th that's a project um, historically that we would have said maybe would scale a couple of years. And so to do it in a few months um, as part of our business goals is um, a fa fantastic win for us. Yeah, I don't know that we have any any quantitative data to be able to share with that. Qualitatively, you know, we've got a lot of great anecdotal and, and uh, feedback, and some of the some of the feedback um, as far as satisfaction is is related to satisfaction with courses that were built in Domino that were previously in another tool or something. Um, a perfect example of that is most of our pretty much all all of our if not most most if not all of our recurring courses we have uh, switched to designing with a pre-test functionality built in in some form to try to give you know with with financial services you know there are things that you have to take every year uh, or something like that and a lot of times they know that content it's just you know they have to recertify that they know it again so to be able to take that and <laughs> take that test pass it and have credit for the course and not have to go through all the content Realistically, most people were kind of clicking through and getting to the end anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, just, it's just recognizing that. And and, uh, and so we we have gotten a ton of, you know, with courses that we've transitioned to that, I mean, teammates love that. They're like, it saves me so much time. I don't have to go through. And so that's that's something we have we have brought in um, and use regularly for anything that's recurring. We, we say, like, you, you need to design in a, a pretest functionality so that they can demonstrate their knowledge uh, and their uh, expertise with it without having to go all the way through the content again every year. That doesn't change anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's an interesting thing. You know, we've been able to do that in the tool for a long time, but it seems to have taken more than a decade for a lot of organizations to have shifted the mindset that that's actually, you know, a, a net benefit as opposed to the, the rigorousness of making sure that everybody saw every year the exact same 47 yeah. pages for that same certification course every year. So it's been one of the fascinating journeys that I've witnessed over time. Um, one last question here then, um, and, and back to um, back to the compliance aspect of things. Um, you know, um, have you been through an audit where you've needed to produce those documents that you've published, and uh, and did that uh, did that go smoother than it than it used to go, uh, etc. Oh yeah, uh, because we had them. <laughs> so, <laughs> prior to that, uh, you know, I can't, I can't tell you the number of times prior to that where we would you get their audit request, and we'd have to go scrambling for content that existed in some kind of source file somewhere or something like that. Um, and whether it's an exist a current version or a previous version, um, you know, we, we would have to go and we would have to find it. You know, we, we try to have some kind of standards to, to put something together and put it out there, but it was always different. And, uh, and it was just, it was, a, I mean, it took a ton of time to gather that content to be able to deliver it. Um, and now, I mean, you know, that's just part of our process. We just hit the button to publish it out. It's a document. And so we have, we we regularly get um, discovery requests for our content, and so it's been much much easier for our team to go and oh, I got the document. I'll just give it right to you. We're good to go. Perfect. I agree and echo what was said there. Um, we do um, something very similar, and also have discovery requests frequently. <laughs> um, and the other thing too is um, I think you mentioned it. But hypothetically, if you have a designer that's no longer with the company or had it saved to their desktop or out of office or something like that, sometimes being able to get that version, you're like, I, I can't supply it. Um, yeah. So there's no artifact to supply there. Um, so that was really nice. And being able to also have our legal and compliance provers review the content the same time as the business partners have also helped to mitigate and reduce that risk. Uh -huh. Very, very cool. Awesome. Um, gang, thank you so much for your time here today. We're actually pushing to the very top of the hour and uh, so we'll bring ourselves to a close. 
Um, Rick, Wayne, Leslie, again, thank you so much for, for joining us here today, sharing a, a little bit of it, your, your experiences um, at your respective financial institutions and how, how Domino One um, overall is playing out for you guys. Um, folks who are still with us uh, in, in, the, in the session, we'll be emailing you out with, the, with links to the, uh, to the recording in case you want to share it with some folks. And we'll also be checking in with you after the session as well, just to see if, um, if you need to, you know, anything else you might want to know and, and, uh, and, and understand a bit better about both uh, what Domino One overall can do, but also you know, some of the things that we're discussing here today. You might have been, might have been hearing phrases like Claro and Flow, which we uh, kind of blew past and didn't necessarily specify too much about. So much, uh, so much going on in, in, in the conversation overall. So um, again, Rick, Wayne, Leslie, thank you so much for, uh, for, the, uh, for the honor of having you uh, here with us today. Um, and of course, we're, we're definitely watching to see what, uh, where you guys take Domino One next in, in your respective organizations too. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, thank you, gentlemen. So much gratitude for you all. Thanks. Mm, thanks, everybody. Thank you. All right. Folks, thank you so much. And uh, perhaps we'll catch you on a, on a future webinar as well. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.